Hi again then guys and welcome to another car review from of course Forza Motorsport 4 and this is another great occasion for me because any chance that I get to talk about Spiker is a good day <laughs> because I absolutely love Spikers, I love every car they've ever built, classic, modern, racing, road and this is of course one of two Spikers to feature in Forza. Now Spiker is no longer in the franchise but that's an interesting point that I'm actually going to come back to later on in the video, because I do have a theory about that. Now, Spiker is one of my absolute favourite brands. In fact, I would go so far as to say that if there's any brand which could potentially knock Maserati off of the top spot for me, it would be Spiker, because my three favourites are Maserati, Spiker, and Panos. Those are the trilogy for me. And speaking of trilogies, there's a very interesting one that happened around the year 2000. For instance, if you think of Italy, you've got Ferrari, Lamborghini, and Maserati, those long-time rivals in different ways to each other. But around the year 2000, another trilogy emerged. Koenigsegg, Pagani, and Spyker. Three cars which were all wacky, borderline gothic in their design, extremely fast, but also very bespoke. These drivable pieces of extreme art. And of those three companies, Spiker definitely goes all out in the art department. These are gothic art deco cars, which from day one have always been much more about the look and the style and the feel rather than just being the fastest thing you can get. And in fact, one of my favorite things that I've heard said about Spiker, and I completely agree with it, is Spikers don't get bought by people who want to get somewhere the quickest. They're bought by people who have already been there. And I think that that is a great quote, because that really is what Spikers are. Spikers are not a vehicle for somebody who wants to break a lap record. You could just buy a Nissan GTR if you wanted to do that. This is a car for somebody who wants to be like nothing else on the road. And that really appeals to me. Now, the interesting thing about bringing Spiker back, which could be a potential issue, is they're kind of not around anymore. I don't think they've sold any cars in a while. I'm not sure if they're technically bankrupt. I haven't actually looked into that. But... The reason why it wouldn't surprise me, even with that in mind, if they did come back, for instance in Horizon 4, is that we already have cars in that game which technically aren't around anymore. Mosler. Mosler went bankrupt in 2013, and they haven't built any more cars since. And yet, there's a Mosler in the game, so clearly Turn 10 worked something out. They either approached Warren Mosler, for instance, and renewed the contract of licensing, or maybe they just had a long-term clause to begin with. Whatever the case is, the car is there, and that's the fact. So bringing back a car from a, an otherwise dead company, in effect, is not out of the realm of possibility for Turn 10. So it wouldn't surprise me if an Aleron appeared in Horizon 4, and I would absolutely love it if it did. Now, the Aleron is an interesting car, and once again, actually parallels Koenigsegg, because with Koenigsegg, they went from, of course, the CCX... In a general sense, of course, there were special editions like the CCXR, the Trevita, but as an overall model, they went from the CCX to then the Agera. The Agera had very similar specs to a CCX, especially when you run them both on biofuel, but it was kind of this facelift in also a similar way to how the Zonda F naturally evolved from the C12S. Likewise with this one, the Aleron is the natural evolution of the C8 platform. And even though I love the earlier 2000s ones, I think I actually like aspects of the Aleron even more. Now, one of the things that this car does retain, thanks to, of course, that Audi engine, is about 400 horsepower. Now, it's not the fastest thing around. It's up around, basically, Audi R8 slash some Corvettes kind of territory, about 186 miles an hour, 0 to 60, about four and a half seconds or less. So it certainly isn't slow, doesn't have all-wheel drive. It's not overly heavy, though, which helps a lot. And, of course, there's a lot of aviation-inspired design, both inside and out, which, in a similar way to Saab and various other brands, even BMW's own logo, harkens back to the days when they used to build planes. But it's really the driving feel and the steering and the handling and the driver feedback which separates the Aleron from its predecessor. Because it's a larger car, in particular, it's a lot wider, and it gives it much more of a planted, smoother, more self-assured stance. It actually feels, for better or worse, depending on who you might be, more traditional. 
it feels more like a larger Ferrari or a Porsche, that kind of thing. These more established, big sports cars or super sports cars, whereas the Laviolet was very small. The nose was very narrow, the rear end was a little bit wider, but still it wasn't that big of a car. This is much larger, and it's much more imposing, visually speaking, but I would also say it's potentially a prettier car as well. Now, in terms of raw performance, I would have to say that the LM85, which is also in this game, is probably the better choice. It's uh, smaller, more compact, as I said, it's slightly more hardcore with the wing, it's, it's a little bit more focused, it's more of a, a race-inspired special edition. This one, though, was always my favourite of the two, for the reasons that I just mentioned. I like that smooth, controlled, surprisingly precise, but still very forgiving handling that it has. It's not the quickest thing around, and no matter what you do to it, it never will be, because again, it's not what the car's intended for. You can make it fast, you can make it powerful, but when you tune up something like a Corvette or a Viper or a GTR, well, of course it's going to struggle because they're just designed to be better, in effect. But what about in terms of spec? Well, the pricing, not too surprisingly, is fairly high. 250,000 credits. Once again, it's not the kind of thing that I would ever recommend buying to somebody who just wants to win races. <laughs> That's not the point at all. Funnily enough, I wouldn't recommend most of my favourite cars to people like that. Panos, for instance, they're also fairly expensive, and you can get cheaper options, Mustang, Corvette, etc. But in terms of the rest of the spec sheet, as I said, it's got around 400 horses, 354 pound feet. So in other words, a similar spec to my Maserati, similar to a Gran Turismo or a Gran Sport even. And the weight, as I said, is very good. Now, it's not the lightest thing around, and it is considerably heavier than the LM85, that car weighs 1,275 kilos, which is really good. This weighs 1,425. But, as a comparison to yesterday's video, I reviewed, of course, the Toyota Camry, the Coupe in particular, from the first Forza game. And that was heavier than this. That's not bad for a car of this size with a larger, more powerful engine. So ultimately, for me, when it comes to Spyker, it's one of those cars where I don't need to try and justify it to anyone. And I never will. Spiker is not a car that needs or wants to be justified. If you need to be talked into liking a Spiker, then it's not the car for you. You either do or you don't, and I love it for that. It's a car that's unabashedly different, it might even be more gothic than Pagani, which is saying a lot, and it's just such an exquisitely artisanal piece of drivable art, as far as I'm concerned. Vehicles like the Maserati MC12 are as well, but to me Spiker goes above and beyond in really crafting every single tiny detail from a, a nut and bolt to a steering wheel and a gear shifter, the quilted leather, the billet aluminium, I believe, on the interior. It just looks stunning. You can take a photo of literally any part of the car and discuss it for minutes at length because it's just got so much thought put into it. And on a side note, I really wish they'd have made the SUV, either in D12 or D8 form, because that would have been my dream car if they had. But that's for another time, and we are going to be discussing that car in Test Drive Unlimited 2 on the channel. So if you're a fan of it, stick around for that. For now, though, that's it for this car review. Of course, I will see you next time. And for now, as always, thanks for watching.